Now what we have seen thus far is that Daniel was a man of unusual commitment and consecration to God's glory. He was a very passionate young man. His passion was not for sin. His passion was not for uh, any unrighteous gain on earth. He was not a covetous man. He didn't desire anything of this world, but God gave him everything. You know, there are people who want everything of this world, but get nothing out of it, end up bankrupt. But there are people who live rather a poor life, just to live a rich life in God, and the Lord bless them. And Daniel was one of those whom God has very amazingly blessed. And um, what we today have before us from verse 14 to the end of the chapter is the results of godly integrity. Uh, God rewarded four men, namely Daniel and his four fr three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Of course, their Hebrew names were Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And they were granted God's supernatural interventions and uh, wisdom and acceptance and all sorts of blessings. Let's pick them up one by one. Firstly, verse 14. It says, So he consented to them in this matter and proved them ten days. Now the word he refers to Melzar, one of the king's officers who was in charge of the dietary program for the Jewish kids. And uh, remember the king's meat and wine was off, were offered to Daniel. But Daniel said, sorry, I don't want to eat these things. You know the re reason is religious. The Bible, the Bible or the Old Testament prohibited the Jews from eating the meat uh, uh, eat, uh, eaten by the heathen because God wanted to make a distinction between the Jews and non-Jews. And so... The food offered by the king to Daniel truly belonged to that category of meat that God said you shouldn't eat. And also strong wine is something the Bible pro prohibits. And so he said, just give me pulse or vegetables and water. I will survive by it. Please don't say he was a vegetarian, okay? He was not a vegetarian, but he was trying to obey the ceremonial or dietary laws in the Old Testament. And um, the, uh, the first time it didn't work and then second time when he tried, he gave this proposal. Give us 10 days. Uh, 10 days will not be too long and um, if, we, if, we, if our countenance and our health look bad after 10 days, then do as you like. Now this is a big challenge. Without eating healthy food, they are supposed to look better than those who are taking healthy food. But the time is only 10 days. Humanly speaking, there is no logic in it. It's very confusing and rather foolish. So they were not sure whether the king's officer would accept it. But you, we all know, though it's not humanly possible, the reason behind suggesting such a proposal or such a request was that they may obey God. So it's not human logic that propelled them to propose this uh, option. But it was simply that desire to obey God. So what happened? The officer consented to the proposal. And this is indeed the Lord's doing. Um, you know, the approval of the proposed test by Daniel and friends was indeed a proof of God's working in their life. It is obvious that God helped them to maintain the godly integrity which they strive to uphold in the palace of the heathen king, Nebuchadnezzar. So we can learn one thing. They had their thoughts, humanly not possible, but then established by the Lord. Now, this reminds me of what the scripture says in Proverbs 16.9. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. You know, we can plan and propose a lot of things. 
unless the Lord bless our plans, we cannot go forward. But how do you know whether the Lord will bless a plan or not? Well, if that plan is in obedience to God, completely in fulfilling His divine purposes, then the Lord will establish it. You know, you can't make a decision, okay, I want to be a rich man, and I, this is the way I'm going to work, and then I'm, you know, I'm going to sign on with this company, they offered me great money, and I'm going to work on Sunday, never mind about worshipping God and going for prayer meeting or fellowship, I'm just going, just going to make money, and I'm going to praise God when God gives me money. And then if you think like this, you know, the money may, may be given to you, but it is not from the Lord. It is from the devil because God never teach you to forsake the Sabbath or the day of worship or forsake the assembly of the saints. In fact, the Bible tells us we cannot actually forsake all these things. So if you want to work hard and earn a living within God's commandments, the Lord will bless it. He's able to. By the way, I'm not suggesting that God wants everybody to be rich or everybody to be in the Prime Minister's office. If all of us are going to end up in Prime Minister's office, then what? Then who is going to be ruled over? <laughs> there is no subject. Everybody is like a king. So that's not the point. The point is this. When God has an intended purpose for any of you, nobody can thwart it. So stay under God's mighty hand and the Lord will establish your heart's desire. Some of us are called to be kings, or some of us are called to be highly placed officers. Some of you are probably called to be a housewife, or, or, a, or a, you know, if you're a man, maybe a, a, a gardener, or a driver, or, or an office clerk, or a CEO, whatever. But, in, if God wants you to thrive in your given place, if God wants you to thrive in your given place, you need to have a godly heart. And all your thoughts must be for God's glory. Not for your prosperity, but for God's glory. So if you are a maid, when you carry out your duty, you do it for God's glory. And if you are a boss, you do it for God's glory. And then the Lord will bless you in that appointed place. And it's not going to be without test of your faith. You're going to be tested. Your faith is going to be tested. Or oh, your boss may say, now you cannot go to a church on Sunday. I need you back here. And you say, sorry, sir. I can do this work before. No, no, I want you to come back. Then you pray to the Lord. Lord, how can I propose to my boss a different plan? But I don't have to sacrifice my worship of thee. But a lot of Christians don't even think like that. They immediately agree with the boss. Okay, I don't go to church. No, I just stay with you. Uh, because they're scared that they will lose a job. Now, if you will lose a job, God is able. God is able to give you another one. You've got to believe. And so whether you are, uh, you know, under pressure or not, what the Bible wants you to do is to obey God. And in obedience to God, whatever proposal you would give for the glory of God, He will establish. And I totally believe that. And this is one clear way uh, we can understand this. Look at Psalm 37, 23. I have it in your notes. What does it say? The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his ways. God will certainly help to order our ways. Our ways are in His ways, and His ways are our ways. You know, as far as, some people have great problem with the last part of the verse, verse 23 of Psalm 37. He delighted in His way. Who delighted in whose way? Is it that God delighted in His saint's way, or the saint delighted in God's ways? Either way it can be interpreted. I think it doesn't make any problem for me because if I'm delighted in God's ways, God is also delighted in my ways because my ways are His ways. Correct? It is not an easy, uh, easy um, uh, thing to uh, 
establish, but I think the way to resolve it is that in this verse, who is walking? The good man, right? The steps of a good man. So his ways, his way is a reference to the good man's way. So who is the one who establishes it? God is the one who established it. So you see, just like Daniel and his three friends uh, wanted to uh, do certain things for God's glory, God blessed them. And so we can also believe. Another thing we can learn from this verse is that God has even turned a hardened, rough, rigid officer to allow an exception to the decree of his despotic king. Nebuchadnezzar is the one who said the, these Jewish boys must eat this and drink this. But then the officer gave an exception for 10 days. This is quite a dangerous thing. If the king comes to know it, huh, his head will be gone. And yet the Lord moved the heart of the officer to give way. Now this is what the scripture tells us in Proverbs 21 1 the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water he turneth it whithersoever he will and so my dear friends let's remember one thing it doesn't matter where the Lord will appoint us whether we are going to be farmers or whether we're going to work in an industrial building or whether we are going to live in a king's palace in all these places God is in charge and even if you have a very despotic ruler above you, a very monstrous boss above you. Remember, he is also in the hand of your God. And God can turn his heart for your sake. Now, the second blessing we noticed here is God empowered their bodies. Look at verse 15. And at the end of 10 days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. We are living in a time people are so concerned about body. Eh? There's so much talk about how to keep your body smart. I just This morning I was driving my van behind a car, nice looking car, and then I saw a sticker on its windshield and it says uh, Flap studio. So what is this? Flap studio. Oh, get rid of your flap. Come to our studio. Have a good workout uh, for two days a week. A wonderful program for you. So you will look strong and handsome. Now everybody, you know, if you think about all the health product sales, I think that will be a big, big business. A lot of people are in it. Whether it's... Pro uh, selling cosmetic products on what vitamins or nutritious food or different kinds of tea you know i'm sometimes tired of people t giving me things honey la, bitter god uh, guava tea uh, jasmine tea uh, then nepali tea indian tea after all i grew up drinking indian tea but now they put it in nice package look even more impressive but there is a whole wide range of business trying to make people healthy. Let me tell you, the best way to keep yourself healthy is to obey God's word. And eat your normal food, good enough. Take your good food, normal food, obey the Lord, much of your trouble will be gone. Drunkenness and gluttony will only bring you to shame and sorrow. Your body will sh show the sin and shame of gluttony and drunkenness and so Daniel said I'm not going to go that way I'm going to trust my God he is the one who wonderfully made me in my mother's womb he is the one who gave me life I'm going to trust him you know I'm not against you taking good food please go ahead and do it if you can afford it God gives to it but if you cannot afford it don't say huh, so and so in the church huh? they all take this nutritional product and then you tell your husband, what did you buy for me? The poor fellow cannot even buy his daily bread. And you put pressure on him. What can you do? You can only have a quarrelsome family. And uh, please don't be carried away by all these things. Eat what you need to eat. Eat in moderation. But 
Remember, your health belongs to God. Many a time I must give thanks to God for helping me. You know, this sore throat that I had was with me for almost three weeks now. And the last Tuesday night, last Sunday after my message, one of our elders came up and told me, Pastor, it looks like you won't be able to preach on Tuesday night. Can I help you anyway? And I said, okay, you take the uh, singing, I will preach. And then he said, are you sure? I said, yes, uh, it's okay. Uh, it's my duty, I must be ready. And on that day, when I talked to him on Tuesday night, he said, oh, your voice is still not good. I said, yeah, I know, I'm struggling, but God will give me grace. And I start preaching. And within two, three minutes, my, my voice came back. I'm normal, or maybe even better than normal. And even now, I'm struggling a bit. And I was telling Brother Kokwa as I was driving here, I'm feeling quite bad in my throat, but never mind, the Lord will help. In my life, I've seen how when I yielded myself to the work that God has given, He sustains my health. Remember, Apostle Paul had a thorn in the flesh, according to 2 Corinthians 12. He had lots of work to do, so he prayed to the Lord three times that the Lord may remove the thorn in the flesh. What was the answer? Let the, let the thorn be there, but I give you grace to help you to overcome that. So he said, when I am weak, then I am strong. So remember, if you live a life of godly integrity, God give, will give you the strength you need in your body, irrespective of all the weaknesses you may feel, so that you can carry out your work. Blessed be His name. So let's not fear if we are a little bit sick. You know, some people, a bit, bit of sneezing only go under the blanket and don't wake up the whole day. And there are some ladies I know, a bit of sickness, then tell, declare holiday for one week. Poor husband and children have no food. But actually, she can wake up and do things. You go and read Proverbs 31. Woman, how she strengthens her loins and strengthens her arms to work. Now, we cannot be lazy. We must be always on the go. God gives us grace. All right? Now, of course, I'm not against rest. Rest when you need to rest, but don't be afraid to take on your tasks. God will help. Then, God granted their desire, verse 16. Thus Melsa took away the portion of the meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them the pulse. So he said, okay, ten days you have proven yourself, so no need to worry. I will not give you any more king's meat and wine. You just eat what you like. So you can imagine the joy that Daniel and the three friends had. This reminds us of two verses in the Bible. Psalm 145 verse 19. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear Him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. Here is another verse. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and He shall give thee the desires of thine heart. When you want to serve God, whatever desire you have, the Lord will fulfill it. And so, here Daniel and three friends were allowed to eat their uh, food according to the Jewish dietary laws and they were not forced to do otherwise now the next verse that we have um, I'm sorry it's somehow repeated twice but uh, verse 17 to 20 there you have uh, God granting them wisdom tremendous wisdom was given to them verse 17 says for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding, verse 20, that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all magicians and astrologers that are all in, in his realm. Well, this is very amazing. You know, God wanted... God wanted um, Daniel to be right at the top of the Babylonian kingdom. That means he must have extraordinary wisdom. And here we are told God gave them knowledge and skill. The word knowledge means uh, the ability or the skill to reason. 
you know, to have the ability to think quick. And when you serve the king, you cannot say, King, I cannot remember. I don't know how. How? You cannot behave like this. You should say, when the king asks you something, Yes, yes, my lord, this is my counsel. You must be quick. So your brain must work fast. You must be of high intelligence. And then not only that, he had the skill. And the word skill means uh, the insight, the deep understanding of things. And then moreover, we are told they were, no, they were knowledgeable and skillful in all learning and wisdom. The word learning can mean literature. Wisdom can mean education. So the Babylonians of Daniel's time were very highly skilled people. They were, they were even researching into the stars and the posi position of stars for various reasons. One of the reasons was, of course, what we call astrology, which is something that the Bible prohibits. It's looking at the stars to decide the future and all those things. But they also study the stars for other reasons, to see how to, realize, how to uh, detect the direction they are going and how to come back the same direction. So they look at the stars positioning and then travel. And so they, they studied the matters of stars as a matter of science and also as a matter of superstition. So those superstition uh, are things that God prohibited, like in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9 to 13. God says such superstitious things cannot be. So we can be sure that Daniel didn't do it. In fact, in verse 20 we are told, the king found them ten times better than the magicians and astrologers. So they were so skilled by God's special bestowing of wisdom that even the men who were known for their magics and uh, astrology could not excel Daniel. They were so good. Ten times better, can you imagine? Ten times better than Babylon scholars. So one of the things that we must keep in mind, wherever God appoints us, God will give us a skill. You know, the other day one lady in the church said to me, you know, Pastor, how come my daughter is so stupid? I told her it's because she doesn't believe in God. That's why. I said, what do you mean? You see, Daniel and the three friends believe in God. So they became so high in learning. And my girl study maths, but fail. I think that's because she has no faith. Now, this is wrong application of God's word. Not God. I said, you know, sister, only Daniel becomes so high. Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego were, were greatly blessed by God, but not in the same level as Daniel. Everybody is different. And God has not appointed everybody to be a Daniel in Babylon's empire. You may be, your daughter may be a housewife next time, but Pray that God will give her the wisdom and skill to be the best wife and the best mother. Or your son may be a taxi driver. It doesn't matter. The Lord can prosper him in his own way. Maybe he start driving a car. God gave him such wisdom that he may own a fleet of taxis at the end. Who knows? So we shouldn't charter our course. Daniel didn't choose to be in Babylon. Jan Daniel didn't plot his way to Nebuchadnezzar's palace. The providence of God brought him there. So if the providence of God allow you to be in certain place, whatever be that role, let's pray one thing. I will be wise to honor my God. And I will be wise to do my part, do, do my duties in God's way. And God will give you the wisdom to do that. Please don't attempt to be a king when you're not called to be a king. Don't, this is not about maneuvering your way up. This is all about staying where God wants us to be and receive the blessing. Remember this. Daniel was a royal child in, in Jerusalem, but he was taken as a slave. Even though he was taken as a slave to Babylon, he just remained faithful to God. And God gave him prosperity in that status as a slave. And so let's don't be bitter about difficult circumstances come. Sometimes it is through difficulty 
God bestows his blessings. And we just have to trust him and obey him. The final blessing that we see is that God appointed Daniel in high position. Can you imagine that? This is a verse, the last verse. Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. You know, King Cyrus is a king in Persian kingdom. In chapter 1, we see Daniel in Babylon uh, under Nebuchadnezzar. After Nebuchadnezzar's Babylonian kingdom came the Medes. And after the Medes came the Persians. And throughout three kingdoms, all right, throughout three kingdoms, God kept Daniel in high place. In high place. Kings died. Nebuchadnezzar, his son, both died. Then came the Medo kingdom, like, with, like the great king of the Medes called Darius. And then came the Persians under Cyrus. And that is altogether close to 70 years. Remember the captivity is 70 years? And Cyrus is the one who asked the Jews to go back. So almost 70 years in his professional life, Daniel was at the top. This is incredible. Kingdoms change, kings change. God's servant shine as God's blessed servant. And so if you trust the Lord with an uncompromising life, God can use you greatly. What God needs are men of integrity, men of consecration, and women of integrity and women of consecration. It's not where you are appointed, but how you conduct yourself where you have been appointed. That makes a difference in our life. May God bless you with these words that we learn. Once again, my apology for starting a bit late. By the way, next week... Um, we have no class here because I'm away uh, and some of us are also away for church camps and all that. So I suggest we will only start it again on the last week of uh, June. All right? In the last week of June, Brother John will SMS you all. Till then, may the Lord be with you. Thank you for joining us. Let's pray.